on one hand, then they began to run this. Oh, I found the clip. It's about three minutes long. Listen to this. I'm getting closer and closer. I'm getting closer and closer. To my goals. To my goals. Becoming accomplished. Becoming accomplished. It may look strange, but tapping, or EFT, is just one of the alternative therapies 34-year-old Kate Duff uses to reduce stress. I'll do the tapping in the morning when I get to work. Kate is a busy entrepreneur and co-founder of a startup called Three Fluid Ounces. Stress was controlling her life. I was over-exercising, I was eating like crazy, um, but I was also taking a lot of Xanax and Ambien and whatever I could get my hands on because you needed something to sleep, something to stay up. It was, it was kind of crazy. She was lashing out at her business partner and her family and needed to make a change. So she tried energy healing exercises at the Lara Touch Studio in New York City. Lara Ann Riggio has been using the Chinese Meridian System and the Indian Chakra System for more than 10 years. She was a skeptic at first until these therapies eased her chronic fatigue syndrome. Now she teaches exercises that work like acupuncture but without the needles. Emotional freedom technique is a way of stimulating all of the points in the acupuncture system. Well, not all of them, but these are basically beginning or ending points along the meridian system. As you tap those areas and repeat a mantra, Lara says you're retraining your body's reaction to stress. She also uses aromatherapy to swap out stressful thoughts for calming ones. When we figure out which oil you need that's associated with a particular emotion, then you can duplicate the this reaction anytime, anywhere. When she's traveling, Kate does exercises like a cross body posture to regain focus. And she has an occasional session in a John of God bed, which uses quartz crystals. While it may seem like nothing is happening, Lara says crystals relax clients like Kate. It's a very, very high vibrational crystal, and you actually aim them at specific energy centers in the body. Mainly, they're mainly used for chakra healing. After a week, Kate was sleeping normally. There are critics of these techniques, but after several months, Kate says she continues to see results. I'm much calmer. Um, I'm much more confident in my decisions and knowing, okay, these are the steps that we need to take to get us where we need to go. And I definitely don't lash out anymore. Results can vary from person to person, and it's important to talk to your doctor before trying any new therapies. For more, go to thelaratouch.com. I'm Julie Banderas, Fox News. Lena and Raphael, any comments on that um, commercial that Fox News is running? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it's the last days. That's all I can say. Talk about an infomercial yeah. for the dark side, folks. There's people yeah. that are going to see that and say, "Oh, My yeah, God. I suffer from stress. I can't sleep at night. Maybe I'll try the aromatherapy." Now, you didn't see the images that they're showing here. Y'all can see the full video on my Facebook wall. But folks, oh, wow. they have pictures of these little vials of oil, and one of them says "joy" on it. Or calm and you take the oil or you sniff it or you put it on your chakra your touch points in your body and it's supposed to help you experience those emotions folks that's Lena is that not witchcraft in a bottle is that not a potion yes it is yes it is um, brother Shannon what they are trying to pass off as this healing it's kinesiology K-I-N-E-S-I-O-L-O-G-Y. They're just rebottling voodoo. They're using the same techniques with the opening of the chakra. They're using the same techniques with the tuning fork. It is the same thing about healing. And that's why people have to today be very careful about these new age holistic, especially these holistic um, uh, so-called um, counselors. They are witches. Okay? Witches. And if you realize it comes through, um, they say it's a Chinese, it's coming through. They exchange demons for demons. There's a lot of people out there that have gone through these testing. There was another name. Ah, hallelujah, Jesus. 
it's a hakundri bas yeah i will remember the holy spirit will bring back to my mind because they're using the same techniques it's a different name marketed somewhere else just like a demon in a different era being called by a different name but it's the same demon of destruction this thing does not does not heal you what the woman did was she got off her prescription pills and her her um, addiction to pain medication and so she has this demon that has occupied her body hallelujah and so now uh, she is now doing the work of the demon to infect others by teaching them this junk yeah Yeah, and always sounds so nice and pretty and uh, is everything is natural and uh, uh don't they have the story of king asa that uh, uh he had a, a infirmity on his feet and uh, because he did not seek the lord uh but he uh he sought the, the physicians instead of the lord you know that was something that the lord did not like you know it's, it's in the bible you know if you get sick seek the lord first don't go to the to a, a doctor or I mean or especially a new age doctor. But you know what? It's the same thing with painkillers, if you really, really look at it. I mean, you know, Advil and Tylenol and all those things. The first thing that we do, we go to those things when we have a pain. It's the mm -hmm. same thing. It's a drug that will affect us and uh, make us go uh, numb or whatever. Uh, so we got to pray about those things, you know. Uh, how, many, how many times we get sick and we pray and we command the infirmity to, to go? In the name of Jesus, or we pray for a brother to pray for us instead of us taking a pain uh, killer or whatever, you know. So it, it's it's everywhere. New age stuff is just off the roof now, and uh, I mean it's people and new age uh, ideology is just getting people so confused. They even there's a lot of mixture. They think it's part of God and and it's biblical and and the. Uh, And uh, it's so demonic. I've seen that a lot, especially with the young people nowadays. Uh, they're really affecting young people. They're make, you know, confusing them a lot. So, you know, when, um, when people have something wrong with them, Jesus. And they go to the wrong source for healing, folks, you may even experience what you think is temporary healing or relief from the pain. But what has happened is you get a demon and a curse, and that thing could yes. even suppress the, power, the, the pain. But it never dealt with the, the root problem, which is something growing inside, eating on you inside. And when its full manifestation comes into play, you got four stage cancer and you're dying. It was eating you alive mm -hmm. all along as it used your body as its vehicle to suck the very life out of you. And then it throws you away like a tin can. Satan He's not in the business of healing no one. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus Christ came to give you life and life more abundantly. And you know Amen. what? What you said is true. Why would God put that in the word, Lena and Raphael, about King Asaph? He was the king of Israel. Yeah. It said, yet in all of his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but sought unto his physicians. It would have been one thing had he gotten a diagnosis and now he knew how to pray. No, he didn't go to the Lord. And he remained that way, diseased for two years, and then he died, and they buried him. Yeah. And, and you know what? He, 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 he could have been. He could have lived. Brother, he could have been saved. He could have called on the Lord and been healed. And mm -hmm. as we're talking about this tonight, and I'm going to give it back to you all to go anywhere you want. I looked up a, a verse about um, King Saul. You know why King Saul died? Because number one, he disobeyed the Lord. I'm going to read what the word says about King Saul. First Chronicles 10, 13. So Saul died for his trespass, when he committed, which he committed against the Lord, because of the word of the Lord, which he did not keep. You know, he was told to go in and destroy the enemy and not take any spoils, destroy everything. And he kept the king alive and took some of the cattle back, I think, and some of the other things, some prisoners. And he, the, the kingdom was written from him as a result. But it says also, because he asked counsel of a medium, he went to a, a witch, a fortune teller, making inquiry of it. Folks, that, he was dead and a few days later, killed. 
That's what happens. It's an abomination when you go to mediums, psychics, fortune tellers, astrologists. You go down to your local shaman. You go down to someone involved in brujeria and santeria. And I forget the name in Mexico, but it's very common. People go down there and it's like their local neighborhood witch doctor. And they'll give you a prescription. Go home and take this bath. Use this oil. They'll do the cleansing technique with the egg, try to transfer the bad energy to the egg. What they did is they got a demon, they got a curse, and the curse not only is on them now, but their kids, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. God visits the iniquities of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those that hate them. Folks, we get cursed. We don't get blessed. And yet how many people have have done these things and are doing them today? Many of them are just ignorant to the word of God, but that's no protection. Being ignorant. People are destroyed from lack of knowledge. This stuff's going on, and I just wanted to bring a highlight to you that I was shocked. I said, what is this? What it is, it's an infomercial. A two-minute infomercial on Fox News. Supposed to be a family network, folks. There's people that are going to take the advice of that and go out there and be defiled. It will defile you. You know, you mentioned um, kinesiology, Sister Lena. They've got iridology, which is where they'll try to diagnose diseases by looking at your eye. They've got this one, I forget the name of it. Um, they look at, you know, they, they try to treat diseases through the foot, through different, different pressure points. They mention the word chakra here. Those are supposed to be portals into your body. Yoga harnesses these. Acupuncture, acupressure, Reiki, light healing. Transcendental meditations, yoga. You get more than a stretch workout, you're getting a demon that comes in and kills, kill, and destroy. And this stuff's infiltrating the church. And now we've got aromatherapy. It's in the church, brother. It's in there. I'm done preaching. Let me throw it back to y'all. Take it over. Sister, this is (laughs) No, you continue going because this is, I'm telling you, the Lord is speaking. He's cleaning house. He's saying that, you know what? You, you are saved now. You are saved people. Just like he said in the book of Revelation. But I have this. You need to rid yourself. There are too many Christians out there smoking. Too many Christians out there drinking. And they are telling you. You are still saved. When you still have a, have a demon. Still controlling your life. They are they're, they're, they're telling you it is okay. To me, it makes me righteously angry that I can walk um, with God and at the same time be living a life of sin, my brother. It it really grieves my spirit because tonight the Lord is doing a roll call. A roll call. He's saying, look, you see, we are at war. Look what's happening in Canada, what's happening in Michigan, all over even our neighborhoods. But you know what? The demons are able to go around and do what they're doing because there is art against us. What is our art that's against us? As he says in um, the book of Judges, in the book of Judges chapter 2, Brother Shannon, the Lord actually sent an angel to talk to his people. And he says to them, you shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. We have made league with the demon of drug addiction. We have made league with adultery and fornication. We have made league, hallelujah, with idolatry. We have made league going to see these people. Reiki, that's the name I was trying to remember. Reiki, where they're doing laying of hands. They're taking what's in the church and infecting it christians are doing reiki christians there's such a thing i never heard in my life christian yoga what an oxymoron and now they've got christian reiki and this thing that was on fox news um the holy spirit is 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 speaking and he's saying what they have done is to make it more palatable it is actually the healing principle of reiki and thrown in kinesiology with it and they're maximizing on and on the on the media forefront and making it retail and telling you how healthy it is but the whole principle of it and it's even we need to be careful when you go out there and you go into these chinese Hallelujah, salons. 
because Brother Shannon, if you notice the, the um, infection that they're using right now to infect everyone, it is Chinese arts. Yes. Okay. They're even doing Reiki in massage. Yes. Be careful, men and women of God. Purge yourself. Yes, the Bible says that the leaves are for the healing of the nation. The leaves, you don't need to chant over the leaf for the leaf to heal. Amen. As a matter of fact, we're getting ready to go to, uh, um, to Uganda, right? So I went to this prayer service the other day. And the man of God that I met, he's an awesome man of God and his wife. And um, he starts to tell me about his um, little garden, right? I am all for the leaves and, you, you know, eating right and taking care of the temple of the Lord. So he went out and he brought me Leaf of Life. I recognize the Leaf of Life because I drink the tea. You know, um, it is something that's well known in the Caribbean, um, you know, that we drink. It, it is really good for like if you have colds or water, just like peppermint, right? But it's got so much um, healing. Well, the man of God spoke to me and told me about this leaf called neem, N-E-E-M. I took it home. And I heard the Lord says to me, take three leaves. He says, go home and Google it. My brother, when I looked up what neem is, it has an anti-malarial effect. One of the um, CDC requirements to go into Uganda, you need to take malarial medication. Isn't God good? I'm saying to us yes. all, be careful. Allow the Holy Spirit of God to examine you and be honest. The rich young ruler, he knew. He was honest with himself. He, he made the choice. I can't separate from my riches. What is that rich you are holding on to that is killing you? Because I'm telling you, no witch no witch, no warlock, no bride as Satan. Doesn't matter how high the high priest you are, that you're in it and they keep you alive forever. The only the only thing that saves you, and that's the blood of Jesus that pulls them out. Because you have you have sold yourself, your body, your soul, and your spirit to the devil and your family, and you are invaded by demons. We have heard testimony after testimony where they are invaded by demons and they have a ruling demon within them that control them. They're like puppets and the demons come in and even the same demons are used to punish them. Knock them all over the place. Give them cancer. They are voodoo priests, high priestesses, brides of Satan with cancer, with illnesses. Do not be fooled by the devil to tell you it is okay to smoke it is lung cancer you are taken in you are giving the demons of infirmity and disease access into your bloodline and your family and don't think you're just giving cancer to yourself you're giving it to your children and your children's children because the iniquity that comes down hallelujah jesus it says unto the third and even to the fourth generation children of God, my brothers and sisters, we are appealing you tonight to step up and answer the call for battle. Cleanse yourself like he said to Joshua to tell the people, go down to the river and wash. Tonight, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord has sent an angel to speak to his people. You shall make no league. He says, I will never break my covenant with you. Do not make any league, hallelujah, with the inhabitants of the land. Don't worship what they are worshiping. Do not obey them. Break their altars. It is time tonight we break the altars. There are lives at stake, souls at stake, and we are soul winners. Look to see who you are. Are you the church of Ephesus? Right? Where your labor and you have patience and you can't bear those people that are evil. Right? Right? But look what God says. 
I have this against you. You've left your first love. Who have you replaced God with? What have you replaced God with? There's a man of God. Well known a pastor. From Uganda. Doing the work of God. The Lord visited him and said. If I had come today. You would not make it. You would have been one of those saying. Didn't I do this in your name. And I would have said to you today. Depart from me. I knew you not. Are you the church of Smyrna? The Lord knows your works. He knows how rich you are. Right? But he says you're going to suffer. And you must overcome. Hallelujah. Are you the church of Pergamos? Right? He knows your work. Hallelujah. And he's telling you hold fast to his name. But he says I have this against you. Because you hold them there that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Doctrine of Balaam in our midst. And we just sit there and accept it. You cannot mix clean with unclean. If you throw dirt in water. It is no longer water clean but dirty water. Okay. Demons contaminate your soul. Contaminate your spirit. And they kill the bodies. Amen. Are you the church of Thyatira? The graveyard. Right? The Lord knows their works and their charity and their service and their faith and their patience and their works. And the last to be more than the first. But he says, I have this against you. You tolerate Jezebel. Who calls herself a false a, a, a prophetess but she's a false prophetess or are you Sardis are you that the Lord is saying hold fast and repent is the Lord speaking to us to hold fast and repent what is it that we need to repent of or are you allowed this year plain Peter patter come on plain with God the one who can kill not only the body but also your spirit come on church quit playing soldiers are needed on the battlefield answer the call missionaries get over yourself with a double mind I'm not sure pack your bags and go Evangelist, you just rather sit there under Jezebel in the church and you're itching. You know you need to go, but you're like, oh, I'm waiting for God's timing. The time is now. How many more people need to die? Get up and go. You preacher, the shepherds are sick. There are many sheep that are out there looking for a sheep fold. God is saying, answer the call so he can send the sheep and direct them to you. You are supposed to be out there doing ministry. But instead you sit there under this man of God and this woman of God. And you're waiting on them to send you out. I got news for you from the kingdom of heaven. They aren't going to send you out because they have a spirit of jealousy. So they rather bind you up like Laban was binding up Jacob until God himself, hallelujah, Jesus, freed him, oh God. And you prophets, oh, you've been sitting there and God speaking, but they tell you, you can't say anything. I'm not talking about the prophets because that is something that really gets me. We have too many prophets running out there and they are 
food for the enemy because they have not allowed themselves to be matured by the Holy Spirit of God. They have no accountability and they keep forgetting that the prophets were raised up in the school of the prophets. They were, they had men and women of God speaking into their lives that were prophets. Let's remember Deborah was a prophetess. Hallelujah. Elisha had Elijah. Amen. Amen. There was a school of prophets when Elisha crossed the river Jordan with Elijah. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Right? I'm not talking about those way, wayward scoundrels because a lot of them are scoundrels. They are nothing but copycats of the seas that are out there profit, profiting off the people of God because prophecy is for the church. So they're robbing us by infecting us with the lying serpent tongues that are out there infecting and disinfecting hallelujah and defiling the prophetic gift i'm not talking about those snake oil prophets i am talking about the true prophets of god that god has given you words to go out cry loud and spare not but you're saying you know what maybe you know what oh god if i say it that they're gonna be mad at me let them be mad at you get up and answer the call and you apostles, what are you doing sitting at home? The apostles, they travel. And they go hither, there, and everywhere. Go and release the men and women of God into ministry. In the name of Jesus, get up and go. This is a season. This is a season where the Spirit of God himself, the Lord says he's raising up in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. says in raising up shepherds, hallelujah, after my own heart. But that means that God himself is shepherding his people. God himself is reaching out. In this season, because the body of Christ is so infected that the Holy Spirit of God is coming in and he's teaching the teacher, he's teaching the preacher, he's teaching the evangelist, he's teaching the prophet, he's teaching the apostles. Because agents, the devil agents, hallelujah, Jesus, the thorns have been sowed amongst us in the name of Jesus. So God himself is going there and he's saying, hallelujah. Let them burn. But you do my will. The state of things is because we have been slothful. And that's one of the seven deadly sins. Slothfulness. It is called being too comfortable in our mess. We just sit in it. The rope has been let down for us to climb out of the pit. But guess what? We overcome one demon and the devil sent another demon. Because why? The door was still open because we have not gotten to the root. What is the root of majority of us? Disobedience. We just want. We're a bunch of crybabies. Wah, wah, wah. I want this. It is time to sell out for God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And everything else will be added unto you. Don't you think God knows you need to eat? Don't you think he knows that you need provisions and resources? Yes, he does. But what did he say in the book of 1 Kings 17? When he sent Elijah to Zeripah. Huh? What did he say? Open your Bibles real quick. Thank you, Jesus. And let our Lord speak. In the book of 1 Kings 17, verse 8, it says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zeripah, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded I wait a woman there to sustain you. We know the rest of the story. When Elijah got to Zeripah, the widow woman that was chosen was about to eat her last meal and die. Isn't our God a God of sense of humor? The one that is to feed us 
is thinking of killing themselves. She's saying she don't have enough. But the man of God says, feed me first. See, God is saying, feed me first and all of your provisions will be met. Come, take my hand, walk with me. My promises will not return void. That which I promised you is still there for you to take. Because I am sending you to a people without hope. But when you leave, as the widow woman said in verse 24, And the woman said to Elijah, Know by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in thy mouth is truth. When you leave, you're going to leave with a reputation that's above all reputation, with an identity that's above your identity and on your birth certificate. It's an identity in, the, in Christ that they'll say, you are a true man or woman of God because the world is in a famine for true men and women of God. And the Lord is saying, it's not that I am not searching. He says, behold, I look for a man or woman amongst them who I could send. Are we going to stand up like Isaiah said, here I am. But let us remember when Isaiah was in there in the presence of the Lord, he had issues. There were some things that needed to be dealt with. Isaiah says, whoa, I am undone. I'm dead. No, God, you're killing me now, Jesus. Because the presence of God came upon him. What if the presence of God came upon us right now? What if God requires what he was required from Isaiah? Would we be able to survive it? Because, hallelujah, the Lord had to take coal from his fire and pass it upon his lips. Hallelujah. Men and women of God, they are dying. Remember in the first place when Adam sinned and the atonement needed to be done. Our God, in his infinite love, searched who could pay the price. And he had to look within himself. He had to come and die. He, Jesus, laid himself on the cross. They didn't put him there he did it willingly because it needed blood not the blood of bulls and goats not the blood of the chicken that they casting at this church he needed a holy blood a sinless blood and he poured it out so freely it is the same blood we splash all over ourselves when we say the blood of Jesus washes me. The blood of Jesus redeems me. The blood of Jesus saves me. Come on, men and women of God. How grateful are you to have a life tonight? How grateful are you to God where he has brought you from? And are you just going to forget about that there are others left behind? Or are you going to be like Rambo and go back? Allow yourself to be sent back to get them. To get them. You know, a few years ago, the Lord gave me a dream. And it's like I walked into the dream. It's more like a vision, really. Because it's like I, I, I felt myself walk into it. And I, when I was walking into the dream, I was seeing this man leading a group of people. They were shackled together, chained. And it was like he was taking them through the jungle. And I saw the man half naked, waist up. And I saw he had on a, a khaki pair of pants cut off at the knees. And he had a cutlass in his hands. And I walked 
in front of him and came in front of him and he looked at me like, what are you doing? As if I'm supposed to be shackled. And I'm like, move out of my way. Because my sight were on a pair of stairs and I must climb those stairs. And he got in front of me. And I said, in the name of Jesus, you better get out my way. And I just moved forward one foot and the next foot. And I was without fear. And as I was moving forward, he was backing up. Let me tell you, there are chains of people that are looking for one person to step out. Hallelujah, Jesus. And defy the enemy to say, no, I don't accept it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just give me one moment here. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Adolam. Hallelujah, Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In First Samuel, Father God, remind me, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Adolam. Adolam. Jesus, Lord, give me strength. Give me strength. I need to speak to you. I need to speak to us all. In the name of Jesus. First Samuel 22. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, my brothers and sisters. We are in desperate times. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's time to answer the call and stop kidding around. And allow the enemy to lie to you. And say, wait, wait, wait. Ain't no more time to wait. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. It says in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 22. It says David in verse 1. David therefore departed. David is running away from Saul. And David now here he is. In flight. David therefore departed. He had just left Gath. Right? Amen. Amen. And escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it. They went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. Let me tell you something. You in your distress, you're drawing all the others that are in distress. But God is saying, step out so I can use you to be the example to deliver. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let us stop saying, but God, I can't speak. But God, you know, you, this thing has to be right. My children got to grow up. Let me tell you something. Even when your children are grown up, there's going to come forth another issue. Another reason why you can't start. But you know, God, if we get the job. But let me tell you something. When you get the job, all of a sudden, they're going to put you on Sunday duty to keep you from church. That ain't going to hallelujah Jesus like my brother was saying God is calling him hallelujah tell him to spend time the devil been attacking his time because he knows time was his weakness what is your weakness and my weakness let us deal with it tonight the Bible says when we are weak hallelujah Jesus Christ is strong give him our weakness so that he can build us up and strengthen us in the name of Jesus that we can go and work great exploits let us remember the prayer of the saints that set the censer on fire in the book of Revelations. There was no fire lit under it. It was the prayers of the saints. Come on, saints of God. We're listening to all this mess. We're seeing the demonic signs of the times. Does that mean that we should just say, oh, it's all going to come to pass. The only reason the Lord says look up is to remind us by looking up that he's coming back. That doesn't mean that your knees should not hit the floor and your head bowed. Come on. The devil is on prime time. For those of you that were following my page, you see the posting on, was it, um, America's Got Talent, the clairvoyant was on the show. And yes. everybody was like, wow, how did they do that? Well, let me tell you how. Demonic, spiritual, in the name of Jesus, familiar spirits. That's how they were doing. But all of America was like, ooh, and I why isn't the church out on prime time? Why is the voice, the voice of the people shut up in the name of Jesus? Because God is not shut up. 
He is not dumb. He's still speaking. But we are too deaf. That is the problem. We are deaf. We're too focused on the infirmity. And let me tell you something. When you the headache is healed, then the devil gonna attack your foot. When the foot heals, he gonna attack your hands. You have to start taking authority. I have my share. How many years that I've not taken an inhaler, have not gotten medication for allergies. I was on pump day and night and in between. And I was going weekly to go get shots up there and shots up there and sniffing this and sniffing that. I was pumped full of painkiller narcotics. And Jesus Christ delivered me how many years ago and delivered my daughter because we both had asthma. Let me tell you something. Healing power is still in the blood. Jehovah Rapha is still at work. Let us give God a chance in our lives to deliver us let us start hallelujah and be true to ourselves and bow the knee to say God you know what I have this struggle but be true to say you know what I kind of like this sin God but I want you to take the taste away from my mouth and cancel the foothold of the enemy anywhere you give him a foothold he gonna crash through we have not seen anything yet. You're going to be seeing prime time levitations. You're going to see prime time astral projection. The Lord shows me these things. But God is raising up a remnant. Hallelujah. Where are the Joshua's? God is calling you. He said, be strong enough for good courage as I was with those that were before you. So will I be with you, says the Lord. He says, don't worry about them. I can speak to you like this because they try to shut me down too. And I, you know what? They were shutting me down. Because I trusted what I thought was the spirit of God in them. But they were a spirit of stagnation being used by the enemy. God sent men and women of God to speak into my life. They are still out there. That will speak into your life. Speak truth to pull you out of darkness. Let me tell you. When the men and women of God speak into your life. You want to know a true prophet. They'll pull you. Pull you. Pull you into destiny. They will pull you out of pits. They're not going to tell you about house and cars. They will deal with your situation. Like God is dealing with the sin of the church right now. The sin of idolatry. The sin of loss. The pride of life. Lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh that has caused the serpent to be in the house of God and to be in our houses and to cripple us. But come on. The distressed are looking for a leader. You who has the gift of healing. The sick want you to be healed. To show them the healing power of God. Come on. Come on. Let us do it this time. Let us really take the time. And draw nigh to God. Let us wake up when he wakes us up to pray. You know when you're awake. Some of us are morning. Morning people do it in the morning. You don't have to do like me. I'm a late at night. But you're an afternoon person. Don't let nobody try to change you or mold you. I'm a loud person when I pray. If you're not loud, that doesn't mean your prayer is not as effective. The only thing I say to you that like to pray quietly Open your mouth. Because your word is life. People tell you all the time to pray in your mind. Don't listen to that mess. Open your mouth. Because when you open your mouth. You are sending the words. You are sending the words to bear fruit. They are prophesying. 
in the name of Jesus. So bless the Lord. In the name of Jesus, what he's doing tonight. Listen to the words that my brother brought forward tonight. It is a roll call. Are you going to answer it? Are you still going to say, Lord, but I'm not ready? Gideon wasn't ready. But the Lord sent an angel and called him Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. Gideon had a heart for the people. That's all God needs. He just needs the heart. If your heart's in the right place, that's all that matters. A heart for the people, a heart for the homeless, a heart for the drug addicts, a heart for the Muslims, a heart for the Buddhists, a heart for the backsliders, a heart for those that have lost loved ones. Come in a heart just for people. Just do it. God will make the way. All you got to do is step out. Brother Shannon had to answer the call. He tried to squash it. But then God lit a fire. Because he came to the realization that he didn't leave Costa Rica, it would have meant his death. Some of you right now are receiving that last message. That doesn't mean God profits in your death. He's sending this message to you to say, don't die. You don't need to die when you can live. It says in Deuteronomy, it says, behold, I set before you life and death. But choose life that you might live. Answer. Come on, this Holy Spirit of God is tugging on you tonight. Spiritual warfare is needed in these end times. All you warriors, allow the Holy Spirit to clean up your mouth so that you can speak. Speak the word of God instead of cursing and effing and all these words. Come on. You're a fighter. God didn't take away the fighting spirit. Let the Holy Spirit of God teach you how to truly fight. And how to use your words and your lips to do damage. Allow the Spirit of God to wash your mouth out. To dip your tongue in the blood. In the fountain of the blood of Jesus. So that you can rewrite history for many lies. Come on now. Warriors. Where are the warriors at? Where are the preachers at? Where are the teachers at? Where are the evangelists at? Where are the prophets at? With the eyes of God. Not the cockeyed ones. Come on. Where are the apostles that need to go? Come on. Where are they at? Where are they at? Come on, church. These words tonight are not empty. Yes, you're going to face persecution. Don't believe the lie. Don't believe when they say, oh, you know, no retaliation is going to come. The word of God says, no weapon formed. They're going to shoot the bullet. And it will pierce skin. Some they will hit the bone. And drop you to one knee. Sometimes they put their foot in your back. Yes. It comes. But then when the spirit. Oh, of the living God. Rises up. Yes. When the line of Judah. Steps in on the scene. And when hallelujah in Jesus. When he spreads his wings. Halabashekesa. I'm telling you that even hell said, wait a minute. Come on, my brothers and my sisters. There is power. Holy Ghost power. Activated. Not dead. 
it will put gas in your tank, money in your pocket to go. Come on. Food in your belly. Heal your body. Deliver you. Save you from the strongholds. Whatever it is besetting you, wrestling you down. Come on, if it's the loss. Because that's plaguing the church. We're so full of loss, we're fornicating. We just want to go have sex and do whatever. Some of us, come on, you live in a home with a man and a woman that God you're not married to. And you're going in the bed every night. And you think it's okay. You want to prophesy and speak in tongues. The devil is a liar. Get up. Out of that bed. Of harlotry. Stop selling yourself. Short. Get out of it. And clean yourself up. We're in blood. Go wash. Make yourself clean. Go to the river tonight and bathe. Bathe. That's all I say. That comes from me too. I have to speak harsh to myself sometimes and say, what is wrong with you? You call yourself a minister of God. And you allow the enemy to do this. Get up. Go make it right. And I say to you out there. That are still holding unforgiveness. And grudge. With men and women of God. Get up. And go make it right. Bow yourself. Submit. You're too full of pride. They did you wrong. Hey. Hey. They did our Lord wrong. But what did he say? Father, forgive them. Some of you guys, your eyes are too lit up for the money. But the Lord says, come to the river tonight. Come and buy wine that costs you nothing. We know what to do. Look around. Are we so heartless because it's not in our house? Look what happened in Nice. Look what happened in Orlando. Come on. Look at the state of our nation. Because you can pack up and go to another country. Remember what the Lord said to them in Jeremiah when they came and sought Jeremiah and asked him whether they should go to Egypt or not. And the word of the Lord told them to stay and the Lord would protect them. But they didn't want to stay. They went to Egypt. They made up their own minds. And they all died. I'm not going to just say stuff. I'm going to give you the scripture. So that you know. Hallelujah, Jesus. They broke. They went to Jeremiah and asked him. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They went to him. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. They did their own wrong. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to find that scripture for you. Because they went to Jeremiah. Here it is, the flight to Je Egypt. Jeremiah chapter 42. They went to Jeremiah to seek counsel. Then all from verse 1, and then all the captains of the forces and Joanna and the son of Korea and Jezaniah, the son of Hoshiah, and all the people from the least even unto the greatest came there and said unto Jeremiah the prophet, 
Let we beseech thee our supplication, be accepted before thee, and pray for us unto the Lord thy God, in for all this remnant, for we are left, but a few of many as thine eyes do behold us, that the Lord thy God may show us the way wherein we may walk, and the thing that we may do. Then jump to verse 5. Then, then they said to Jeremiah, The law be a true and faithful witness between us, if we do not even according to all things for, for the which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us. Whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God, to whom we send thee, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. And it says it, they came back. Hallelujah. And this is the, what the message the Lord brought back to them. Verse 9. And said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, unto whom you sent me to present your supplication before him. If you will still abide in this land, then will I build you and not pull you down. And I will plant you and not pluck you up. For I repent me of the evil that I have done unto you. Be not afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom you are afraid. Be not afraid of him, said the Lord, for I am with you to save you and to deliver you from his hand. And I will show mercies unto you, that he may have mercy upon you and cause you to return to your own lad. Hey, so what did they say? Hallelujah. Verse 15, And now therefore hear the word of the Lord, ye remnant of Judah. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, If ye wally set your faces to enter into Egypt and go to sojourn there, then it shall come to pass that the sword which ye feared shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and the famine whereof ye were afraid shall follow close after you there in Egypt, and there it sh ye shall die. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It says, and in verse 43, in chapter 43, I'm sorry, verse 1. And it came to pass that when Jeremiah made an end of speaking unto all the people, the words of the Lord their God, for, the, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them, even all these words. Then, said, then spake Azariah, the son of Hoshaya, and Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the proud men, <laughs> saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speakest falsely. The Lord our God hath not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to, so, to sojourn there. So, hallelujah. Verse 3, But Baruch the son of Neriah set it thee on against us, for to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death and carry us away captive into Babylon. So Johanan, the son of Kareth and all the captains of the forces, all the people, obeyed not the voice of the Lord to dwell in the land of Judah. But Johanan, the son of Kareth and all the captains of forces, took all the remnant of Judah that were returned from all nations, whither they had been driven to dwell in the land of Judah. Even men and women and children, the king's daughters, and every person, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the God, had left with Jedalia, the son of Haikam, the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Baruch, the son of Nerea. And so... They came into the land of Egypt, for they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Thus came they even to Taphanes. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah and Taphanes, saying, Take great stones in thine hand, hide them in the clay in the brick, which is in the entry of Pharaoh's house in Taphanes, in the sight of the men of Judah. The word of God always will hunt you down. Just like the prophecy and the word of God of your purpose and destiny will forever chase after you. The word of God that prophesied that said you're an evangelist will chase you down. Mr. and Mrs. Evangelist will chase you down. Pastors, Mr. and Mrs. Pastor will chase you down. Teachers, Mr. and Mrs. Teacher will chase you down. Prophets, Mr. and Mrs. Prophet will chase you down. Apostles, it will chase you down. And the Lord says unto them in verse 10, 43, in verse 10, And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will send and take Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will set his throne upon these stones that I have hid, and he shall spread the royal pavilion over them. And when he cometh, he shall smite the land of Egypt and deliver such are for death to death, and such are for captivity to captivity, and such as are for the sword to the sword. I'm saying this to us all. God 
our God is speaking. He sent his angel, sent his word to speak to his body today, the body of Christ. Prepare thyself, bride. A bride, when she's going to get married, she goes to fix her hair. If she has crooked teeth, she looks to go and fix the teeth, to fix the nails. Because she wants to look beautiful for her wedding day. If she used to wear glasses for that day, she will wear contact lenses. She wants to be beautiful for her wedding day. Come on, church. Let us be beautiful for our Lord. Let us turn over every open door and every window that we have given the enemy legal footholds. Let us turn it over to the Lord. Let us cancel those demonic contracts that we have with hell. And let us let God be God in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're live with Evangelist Elena Nita and Pastor Rafael Candudo. We're almost out of time for tonight, but I've got a few things more I want to cover. I want um, first to throw it back over to Brother Rafael. And Brother Rafael, would you like to add anything? And then you'll have a uh, trip coming up to Uganda. I want you to talk about that and how people can be a part of that. No, I, I pretty much she said everything that has to be said. And uh, uh, I would like to let her share the, the trip uh, that the Lord ha has called her to, to go. I believe it's a, uh, it's a blessing. And uh, I encourage people there to please uh, support this trip to Uganda. Uh, you know, give in to, uh, to evangel Evangelist Lena Nita Ministries and uh, help this ministry uh, so they can go and uh, bring the word of the Lord and minister to the people there. Uh, the power of God, not only the, the, the word of the Lord, you know, not only the word of men's wisdom, but the power of God and the manifestation of the spirit of God, you know. So the, the faith of the people in Uganda will be established in the power of God and in not in men's wisdom. I believe that uh, she, uh, Sister Lena, she will be a, a blessing to those people that uh, they must hear the gospel, the power, the gospel, the kingdom. And I know she's going to bring teachings to the to the church over there, equip the people, the saints, the ministers, and uh, they'll be able they'll be able to take what they're going to learn, and uh, and uh, you know just uh, uh, go and win souls and uh, be more effective in the kingdom of God. You know, so uh, I encourage you all to please uh, donate uh, and encourage this ministry because I know she's the real deal. I know she's a prayer woman, and I know she does not. Uh, she goes through a lot in life, you know, because she's paying a heavy price. And I know her personally. I know she's a sincere minister of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Go ahead, sister. That's right. Lena, tell us about Uganda. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Shannon. Thank you, Brother Raphael. Um, it is called God Loves Uganda. That is the name of the um, assignment, God Loves Uganda. You can check out some more about it on GoFundMe.com. Just look it up, God Loves Uganda. You'll see the picture with the, um, the Uganda flag. It says Uganda, God Loves Uganda 2016. Um, this is a, this is, God is just so awesome in his divine connections. Um, I was contacted by this pastor. Uh, he said he he wanted us to come and minister the word of God. His people down there were hungry. You know, there is gospel down there, but it's prosperity gospel, not the gospel of sin and repentance. Same thing that's going here. But you know what, church? God is sending people from other nations here to evangelize. Some of us are leaving here to go and evangelize. And he's sending us there this November. Um it's it's going to be going in, planting the seed, the Holy Spirit water, and bring forth the, the increase. Um, we are in need of funding. It's a group of churches, and I don't know how many of us have traveled across, like to Africa. Those churches do not have money, okay? They operate a lot in the villages, and um, so 
they, there is some expense they're doing in the city, but all of their expense is going to bring in down the pastors and the people from out of the hills, out of the villages to come to the city where we're going to be doing the conference in Kampala. It's actually in Gayaza, just a little bit outside of Kampala, less than 30 minutes out of Kampala, where we're going to be doing it. I've been posting pictures of the compound of the church that's there. Um, they're also doing it. They also have a school ministry for the orphans. It's a ministry that is for the widows and the orphans trying to do God's work. Um, and they are just it's so in need of the truth. They say, come and teach us. We're going there to teach them spiritual warfare. The, the Lord has given me some stuff that he wants me to teach them. And I don't believe, um, Brother Shannon, that this is going to be our last time going there. I believe we're going to be able to go back again. Um, what the Lord said to me is there's a team. And so... Um, the Lord is speaking to people in the beginning. I was saying, I want you, I want you, I want you, you know, and then the Lord is saying, just share and whomever that I am choosing to go to be a part of the team, not an onlooker, not a tourist, that they will already have the heart for the ministry because I had already placed the heart for this ministry already into their hearts and they will come on and the lord said to me too brother shannon um that the people that will be funding this ministry are people that are with widow mites and i said the widow mites just like the widow of zeripa she didn't have anything she had her last meal that's what she fed the man of god that's what's going to fund this ministry we are looking for a team about five to six people including myself because this is a four full day of conference we start early in the morning and we're going to go to the night for the service and you know i don't know anyone has ever been to conferences in africa but they line up you hear me they line up coming for prayer and there is so much that goes on because the sorcery and witchcraft is thick and right now i'm telling you there is blood shed the blood of uganda is crying out out for justice and the justice must come but god is sending his people just like he sent hallelujah jesus he sent jonah to nineveh just like he sent isaiah jeremiah ezekiel and all the other prophets elijah he's sending us but here is one good thing my brother 2012 the president of uganda made a public announcement worldwide it was it was filmed and it's on the GoFundMe site. I showed that video and he dedicated the country to the Lord. He acknowledged the Praise evil God. that was done in leadership. He acknowledged what's going on. There is so much sorcery. They are actually stealing children. The rich people are ha the witch doctors out there are taking virgins and children and they are killing them and sacrificing them to the god of maman for these rich people that are getting richer and richer they have been convinced that the shedding of innocent blood gives them riches you talk about sickness going on in here you we have not even delved into the depth of witchcraft just go across the waters those are the things that are happening. And I say to you, my brothers and sisters, we don't need to beg. The Spirit of the Lord says, I will touch everyone that will give because it is not about the much. It is about the cheerful giving because the cheerful giving sends that seed with a blessing to go and to do the work of the Lord. So I say to you, if God has spoken to you to give, don't say it's only five. Don't say it's only a dollar. You give it because that five and that dollar is just like the five loaves and the two fishes and the, the two, two loaves and the five fishes, they multiplied and fed the multitude. Your dollar will be multiplied to feed the multitude of all those churches that are gathering to be fed so they can take it back to their villages and teach them what they have learned. 
and bring their country and the land back to God. Amen. That's right. Amen. What is your website? And also, where do they go for the GoFundMe page? Oh, yes. They can go to GoFundMe and look up God, GoFundMe.com and look up God Loves Uganda. And you'll see, like I said, with the flag and it's got my name, you'll see my little, um, you'll also see my, um, my picture from Facebook. Or you can go to my website which is Lena, L-A-N-A, Nita, N-E-I-T-A dot com. And there is a link on my website on the, on the, the top menu that says Support Uganda. When you click on that, it will take you directly into the GoFundMe. Feel free to read, get to know, and pray about what is it that you are to sow and cheerfully sow it. And we thank you in advance for it. Amen. And your website is? LenaNita.com, L-A-N-A-Nita.com, N-E-I-T-A dot com. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Brother Raphael, I want you to give out your contact information as well. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, if you'd like to contact me, uh, you may do so through Facebook. I think it's the easiest way. And uh, there's a lot of you being contacting me through Facebook. And, uh, and I'm so happy to make new friends. And uh, every person that we minister to, uh, we actually, uh, we have a, a friendship and, uh, you know, we keep in touch and keep praying for one another. And uh, it, it's, it's been a blessing, a really blessing. So uh, if you'd like to contact me, you may do so to Facebook. My, just type it in my name, which is Rafael Candido, R-A-F-A-E-L-C-A-N-D-I-D-O. Rafael Candido, okay? Uh, you also may uh, contact me through uh, email. And uh, our email is houseofshalomfl at gmail.com. Houseofshalomfl at gmail.com. Or you may call our office number. And the number is 47 201 62 to seven four seven two one six two two seven amen and uh, if any of you uh are around here central florida and you want to get baptized we're going to be doing baptisms uh not this sunday but the next sunday uh you know every once in a while there's people that want to get baptized and there are some churches that are, they're not doing that anymore so if you live close to orlando the orlando area uh, you can contact me. We're going to be doing baptisms. We're going to have a, a nice uh, baptism service, and it's going to be amazing. Uh, and uh, the other thing is, uh, if you like to support us uh, financially, I pray that you support uh, Sister Lana and uh, Omega Man. But if you have any old shoes that you like to donate, shoes, jackets, okay, all those types of things, that you like to donate, you can contact me and let me know because we're having homeless ministry. We'll be doing, we're going to be going to the street. We'll be feeding the hungry and uh, we'll be giving away uh, clothing, which have been a blessing, you know, and the power of God be touching them. We'll be laying hands on them. Uh, we have doing, uh, we have done a uh, sinner's prayer with them. We have a, you know, we have prayed for people. Uh, last uh, last uh, Tuesday that we went, uh, we had a lady that uh, she came to us and uh, she had a, she, well, she had a lot of things, uh, but for sure she had insanity. And uh, we prayed for her. We, you know, we shared the gospel of the kingdom with her. And, uh, you know, we prayed for her. And uh, she told me, uh, you know what? I didn't have a headache, but my health, uh, but my head feels much better. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we were just laughing. We had a great time over there. Uh, we had uh, some of them crying as we were ministering to them. And uh, it was a powerful, powerful, powerful thing that the Lord is doing over there. You know, uh, we had uh, those, the ministers that went with us, uh, you know, they were sharing the gospel. And, and not only share the gospel, they were actually being part of their lives. You know, they share situations. They just have a conversation. Some of them, all they need is to feel loved. And uh, when we go over there, we just give a food. Uh, we, we we go over there and we show the love of Christ and it's been a wonderful experience and uh, we are honored to do what we do and a lot of times they ask for shoes 
there was a, a time that a brother asked for a, a boots to go to work. You know, uh, he, he found work. He have you know, but he cannot work because he has sneakers and he needs those uh, steel toe uh, boots to be able to work. So uh, you know, the Lord bless us to you know uh, enough for us to go and to Walmart and buy some boots, and uh, so that man could work. And you know, you want to know what happened? We never saw that man again, which is a good thing. That means that he got the job and he got out of the street, which is that's what we're looking for. Amen. So God is doing many, uh, beautiful things with the homeless. And uh, uh, so if the Lord places in your heart to do that, please uh, let me know. Contact me. Yeah. And uh, if you want to donate Bibles as well. I remember there was a sister who donated uh, Bibles to us. A lot of, a lot of Bibles and uh, notebooks and, uh, uh, and things like that. And that uh, was a blessing to us. You know, we'll be able to don uh, donate Bibles to people and, uh, and, uh, and notebooks so people can write it down, the things of the Lord. And uh, it was, a, you know, it was a very, very good thing that she did. I believe was led by the Holy Spirit because we really needed that at that time. So uh, whatever the Lord placed in your heart, uh, you know, you can contact me, let me know. And uh, please keep us in your prayer. Please, I really ask you that uh, we need, we really need your prayers. Amen. We, uh, the enemy is coming heavy. <laughs> like you have no idea, but it's because we're being uh, successful, I believe. Go ahead, Sister uh -huh. Lenny. Yes, um, I thank the Holy Spirit for having you mention this. This is something I spoke to me. I am wanting to bring Bibles with me. I'm wanting to bring spiritual warfare books with me. But these things, of course, takes funding. So if we have multiple of anything you want to send to me, just go to my website, contact me on Facebook, Evangelist Lena Donita. Let us make contact to bring the truth. Amen. They need um, prayer books. I'm actually looking to contact um, uh, a company to get some prayer books ordered because they need to know how to pray, basic yes. principles, you know, about how to pray, but most of all, also to get Bibles in their hands. We're looking to spread out what's what we're carrying amongst everybody so that, you know, to help to lessen the weight. You know, if we're going, we might as well bring it because it will cost us a lot of money to ship it. Amen. So anything you can do, if the Lord places on your heart to ship us a box of Bibles, God bless you. You know, please, I ask you that you will ship the ones with good prints. You know, I I don't like when we go somewhere and we're giving out Bibles, Brother Shannon and Pastor yes. Raphael, and, and you need a, a microscope to see the words. Yeah, you know, that's another issue. So true. <laughs> yeah, you know, and they can't see. Most of these people, they can't see, you know. Yeah. And 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 also, if you have the, the Bible on audio, some of us, we have CDs. We don't even listen to it anymore because we're all on the Internet. Ship me the CDs. Amen. I'll take it. You know, we, let's, let's, get, let's flood them with the word. Amen. Let's flood them with the word, whatever, yeah, whatever it is. I mean, that we can do the the booklets, you know, yeah, just even, as the Lord leads. Even 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 little things like a, a, a you know a pen, for them will be a blessing. Uh, I know that as a as a fact. You know, I was yes. you know I grew up in a third world country. I know what it was a a pen for from uh, from the U.S. It was a big deal. Uh, you know. Uh, book markers, you know, things like that, uh, highlighters, whatever, just something that will help them to grow in the things of the Lord. I mean, uh, they have some pens that have a scripture on it. That, that's a blessing to them, you know. Amen. They'll be so happy with that. The, the little gift of, what, 50 cent thing? They'll be so happy with that. And they, they're going to cherish that thing so much. We just don't have any idea how much they'll love that. I know that as a fact. Amen. I remember there was a, a minister that once came to Brazil, and uh, American minister, and he came to our church, and he brought us uh, candy, just some, some candy from the U.S. I mean, we were so happy about that. Oh, man, we were just talking about, listen, I ate a candy from the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because we were so poor, I mean, and uh, Brother Shannon, you know that, where you're living oh, yeah. right now, you know about that. Yes, sir. That's how it works, and it's real, and uh, a lot of things that we don't don't care for them is just everything and uh, especially if we can have something to have a scripture or something about the lord 
Oh man, that's a that's a beautiful gift, and I'm I'm pretty sure it's gonna encourage them a lot. Their faith, amen. I want to encourage everybody to get behind this Uganda trip. Support that. Support Pastor Rafael Candido and his ministry, and um, you'll be blessed in doing it. And I want to thank you, Rafael. Thank you, pa- uh, Pastor Rafael, and Evangelist Lena Nita, for coming on tonight, for bringing the word, excellent right now word, and. We'll have this up in the archives within the next day. If you're coming in late and you want to get this, great teaching tonight, destroying the high altars. And it's time to answer the call. Would you all like to close in prayer tonight? Amen. Well, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity one more time, O Lord, that uh, it was a blessing to be here, O God. We thank you for your presence, O Lord. We thank you because you you honor us with your presence. We thank you, Lord, because uh, you know uh, you just you're so awesome with us. You know we don't deserve anything, Lord, but you always give us so much. Uh, we can never understand how much you loved us, Lord. I believe you never will understand how much you loved us. Your love is so amazing, so big, so powerful and huge, oh God. We cannot comprehend, oh God. We cannot comprehend, oh Lord. But we just we are thankful, Lord, because we serve a mighty God. Father God, I pray that the word that was spoken tonight, oh God, I pray that you seal that word, oh Lord. You seal that word, Father, the seed that was planted on people's heart, oh Father. I rebuke the devourer that tried to rob the seed. I break their power in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you help us to examine our hearts, oh Lord. If there's any little issue of pride out there, Father, let us see, oh God. A lot of times, oh Lord, we don't see it, but others, they, they will see it. A lot of times, Father, we don't want to see it, you know, but sometimes we are, those that are married, especially those that are married, their uh, their uh, uh, wife or their husband, they will tell the issues that we have, oh Lord. Help us to see it. Help us to listen to the, the, the people, Lord, and help us to listen to your Holy Spirit. Let every day, oh Lord, that passes by, Father, let us be more uh, sensitive to your Holy Spirit, oh God, you speaking to our hearts, oh Lord. Father, I pray, oh God, that as the days get you know, worse and worse, oh Lord, I pray that your power, your anointing will rest upon our lives stronger and stronger, Father. As chaos will be breaking outside the streets, oh Lord, I pray that your power and your glory, Father, will increase in our lives, increase in our ministry, Father. Father, I pray all those things. I pray blessings upon blessings upon the listeners right now listening to us, oh Lord. I speak shalom, peace, joy of the Holy Ghost upon their lives, oh God. I pray for the presence of the Lord to be upon them. I pray that, Father, that your love your touch, your kiss, a kiss from heaven will touch them right now, Lord. Give them a good night of sleep, O Lord. I pray that you just fill them with your Holy Ghost and power and let it flow, O God. Just fill them, O Father, with your love, your peace, O God. Father, I pray for uh, for you to increase uh, all of us who are listening right now, O Lord, with your hedge of protection, O God. Increase the hedge of protection upon, upon our lives, upon our, 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 our loved ones, O oh Lord, the ones that we love, O oh God. We pray, Father, because the, the devil is out there, Father, trying to, uh, you know, just devour, Father, anything that he can put his hands on, O oh Lord. But, Father, we, we thank you, Lord, because you have placed holy angels to camp around us, O oh God. And, Father, we pray that you continue doing so, Father. Increase the angelic activity around us, O oh God. Loose your ministry angels to our lives, O oh God. Minister us, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father. We thank you, God. God so much because you're a beautiful, powerful God. And we love you, Abba, Father. We love you, Daddy. We love you. You're so awesome. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I say amen. amen. Lena, Raphael, love you both. Thank you for coming on tonight and going with me late. And we'll see you next time. God bless you, Brother Shannon. God bless you all. Thank you for having us. Amen. Praise Thank you so much. Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. That was Evangelist Lena Nita Dunn and Pastor Rafael Candido. Prior to that, we had Curtis and Haley Horse. We did a uh, 12 o'clock broadcast today also with Winston Folks from London, England. And then we also had yesterday... Uh, we had Plamen Petrov, Tommy Karaklov, we had Joseph Jasinski, and Al Cuppet, and we had some Operation Evangelism. I think we've done about eight programs.
and I want to um, encourage everybody to come back again. We're going to have John Ramirez on Saturday night, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern. And right now, I think I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> Praise God, he gave me the energy to make it this far. And it was worth it because this was a right now word. Folks, you can sleep later, but when the call comes to make a stand against the host of hell, we must answer that call. The devil's trying to take some people out tonight with witchcraft. I praise God for Lena and Raphael, Curtis and Haley, and all of you out there who came in agreement with us tonight for the two serious cases where the witchcraft covens are trying to take people out in body bags. I got energized just praying. Felt that Holy Ghost dynamo beginning to crank up. Amen. You can make a difference. You don't have to take it lying down. You fight back. Bind and loose in Jesus Christ's name. Make a difference. In your own life and those of your family and friends. You can stand in the gap even if no one else does. Amen. It makes a difference. Thank you, all of you out there. God heard the prayers tonight. I know we did. I know the enemy's angry. The enemy can go pound sand. Well, if you want to contact me, you can email me, omegamanradio at yahoo.com. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Please support this mission to Uganda of Evangelist Lena Nita Dunn. It's going to make a difference. Support the ministry of Pastor Rafael Candido. Pine Ridge Warriors, I want to thank all of you out there. Keep it us alive out here on Omega Man Radio. May the Lord richly bless you. And we'll see you again on the next program. Love all of you. Again, God bless you both. God bless everybody. Omega Man Radio has been commissioned to invade deep into enemy territory, drive out the hosts of hell, and take back the land. Our mission is to preach Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is the only name written under heaven by which men might be saved, cast out demons, and pray for the sick that they may be healed in Jesus' name. If this program is a blessing to you and you would like to take part in this harvest of souls, join with us and attack the hosts of hell by donating any amount online at www.omegamanradio.com. You may also donate by sending check or money order to 9030 West Sahara Avenue, Suite 665, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. We thank you.